everybody, welcome into the show today. I am Brian Keating, he is Carson Cunningham. Welcome into the Oklahoma Ford Game Day, counting down to the 117th edition of OU Texas. Fired up? Yes, there's a lot of <laughs> intrigue surrounding this game. I think for the first time, Texas is a competent football program. They've been close games regardless, but I think Texas is going to give OU a great shot today. I, I think that's right, and, and we have a great show planned for you. Take you all the way to 11 o'clock, uh, kickoff here right here on Channel 5 for OU Texas. Here's what's coming up in the next hour or so. The Superman play, Carson turns 20, Roy Williams and Teddy Lehman. I think it's the most iconic play in OU history, let alone the Red River rivalry history. And we're gonna hear from Teddy and Roy on how this play all came together. This is really other than, you know, just the OU Texas part of the game. The fact that there's an Oklahoma high school kid who's, oh, by the way, dad played quarterback at Oklahoma, Casey Thompson, will be the starting quarterback for the Texas Longhorns. And he has revitalized Texas's offense. They're averaging 53 points per game once he was inserted as a starting quarterback. We'll hear from Casey Thompson. We'll have Lincoln Riley talking about Casey Thompson. And uh, we'll also have Brandon Whedon here on the show breaking down quarterbacks. This is a great quarterback game, Carson. And so the fact that you've got a, a former NFL quarterback here talking about what it's like to be Spencer Rattler and Casey Thompson going to this, I think he, his breakdown is going to be outstanding. Yeah, he's faced OU in Texas on the field, and he's now an excellent analyst for ESPN, so he really can break down the quarterback play from both teams. All right, let right, uh, before we get into the game, let's go back a season ago. Let's look at what happened in 2020 for OU Texas because you talk about all the wild versions of this football game. The game a season ago and all the twists and turns of the 2020 season, let's go there. Let's go to the highlights from one year ago. And you remember, this is the pandemic game, CC. Spencer Rattler making his first start as the starting quarterback in this rivalry finds Marvin Mims, who, oh, by the way, that's a storyline as well. They got to find Marvin Mims, who has Absolutely. yet to really break out. But this was the problem for Spencer Rattler, CC. The turnovers, they had to take him out of the game. He had an interception and a fumble. They benched him, and really that kind of is when Rattler took off. He played really well down the stretch to lead them to a win in overtime. And he had thrown seven interceptions through the first five games, only threw two after this game. Sam Ellinger getting Texas back in and hanging in. He played a, a million of these games, tied it at 10. Marcus Major, by the way, that's a storyline as well. He's back for this one, hadn't been on the field. He can play in this football game, scored, had 12 carries last season. P.J. Pledger, the score there. Um, but down the stretch, OU was ahead. But Texas makes a ferocious comeback with 3.28 to go. It's Sam Ellinger finding Joshua Moore. Texas was only down a touchdown, and that tied it with 15 seconds to go in the ballgame. Wow. We had to go to overtime. It's 31-31. Texas gets the football. Sam Ellinger, again, he had four touchdowns a season ago, made it 38-31 Texas. But Spencer Rattler, he just grew up in this football game, had to make play after play, especially in overtime. Finds Austin Stogner that tied it at 38. So Texas forced to kick a field goal. Oh no, Cameron <laughs> Dicker. He's been a hero in this game. He Dicker shanks the kicker. it. Shocking that he missed that kick. He shanked it. So Gabe Burkich can win it. And oh my goodness, he doesn't do it. He's the best kicker in the country this year. Both kickers missing big, big shots last year. So we had to go to a third overtime. Spencer Rattler, I mean, he can do this. Scramble around. Stoops. He's really good on the move. You're right. Drake stoops there. Rattler had 209 yards, three touchdowns, and Sam Ellinger had to answer. He couldn't do it. Trey Brown, the interception, and Oklahoma's going to win it. 53-45. Run around, Trey Brown. <laughs> the Sooners survived. He's a Texas killer, and, and, man. And they, I mean, he, he was a Texas killer. Then the Big 12 Championship game did it a season ago. So uh, that's what it looked like a, a year ago. Now it will certainly look different this season. Uh, they're going to have a full house there. The Cotton Bowl, that was about 50% because of the of pandemic a season ago. But this series, it, it's always wild. And, and you think about over the last decade, Oklahoma's been much better than Texas. Much better than Texas. But these things always seem to go to the very end. Think uh, six of the last seven decided by a touchdown or less. Yeah, since 2012, they've all been close games. Yep. And that's with Charlie Strong as a lame duck head coach winning that game, beating Baker Mayfield right. in 2015, right. one of the more shocking results. So it's been close no matter how bad Texas is. And I think they're pretty good this year. I think they're pretty good too. Um, you mentioned, shoot, Charlie Strong beat Baker Mayfield. 
Kyler Murray lost in this game as well. So yeah. you talk about two of the best quarterbacks ever to play at Oklahoma. Speaking of quarterbacks, so let's. This is a great quarterback game, and I think we're going to talk about about these two guys throughout the duration of the show. But for Spencer Rattler, this is start number two against the Longhorns. You kind of know how this season's been, right? All the hype and all the expectations, and I'm not sure he's quite lived up to that. But I'm also not quite sure that he's deserved with the booing against West Virginia and some of the things. He just hasn't quite lived up to that superstar status. Yeah, and I think a lot of people have rightly pointed out that the offensive line's been a much bigger issue yeah. for Oklahoma. They haven't been able to run the football, so there's been a lot of weight on his shoulders. But that's what it's like playing quarterback at the University of Oklahoma. I think he's really played well. The, the last two drives against West Virginia, combined with the game against Kansas State, he's completed 31 of his past 34 pass attempts. That's as good as it gets in terms of completion percentage. So he's really bounced back. I think Lincoln Riley is using him in much better ways, getting him outside the pocket. But he wilted a little bit in the first half last year in this, in this game, this environment. He played really well in the second half to go back and win the game. But Rattler's had an up and down year so far. Ten touchdowns, four interceptions. It's not the gaudy numbers that we've come to expect from Oklahoma quarterbacks. But he's certainly capable of having that kind of day, especially against the Texas defense. It's probably not as good as a couple of defenses he's played already this season. All right, let's go to the kid from Oklahoma, Casey Thompson. It's the first time in the history of this rivalry that the starting quarterback for the Texas Longhorns is a kid who graduated high school in Oklahoma. And oh, by the way, <laughs> his dad just happened to play quarterback for the Sooners. Yep, son of Charles. It's, it's one of the more remarkable storylines we've seen in 117 years yeah. of this rivalry. It really is. And it's crazy to me because the word at Big 12 Media Days was Casey Thompson's going to be the quarterback. But then Sarkeesian starts Hudson Card. They get blown out by Arkansas. He realizes that mistake, and he has led, Casey Thompson has led scoring drives on 23 of his 29 possessions. He's been sensational. They're averaging really 53 points per game with him at quarterback. He has completely changed Texas's offense, and it's going to be, it's going to be a, a long day for OU's defense if they can't get off the field on third down. Nine touchdowns and just three interceptions. He took over this starting job in week number three. Texas is 3-0 in those three games, outscoring their opponents 160-53. to So he's certainly capable. Now, look, those three opponents aren't world beaters. Rice, Texas Tech, and TCU. But he's played very well for the Longhorns, really steadied that ship. And when you look at the numbers and you compare these two guys, I mean, Casey Thompson comes into the season. You think he's the starter, then he's not the starter. Spencer Rattler was the favorite to win the Heisman Trophy. You look at the numbers, they're very similar, and, and Casey Thompson's played less than, than Spencer Rattler has. And I think Thompson's been much better scrambling, running the football. Yeah. He's averaging yeah. five yards per carry. Rattler's been a little indecisive at times, only averaging 2.7. I thought Rattler was way more decisive against Kansas State. Casey Thompson's not an electric runner, but on third down, everybody's covered, he's gonna take off and run. We've seen that give OU trouble a lot this season with Nebraska, Tulane, on down the line. You know who else is, is in their first rivalry game here in the OU Texas rivalry? It's the head coach of the Texas Longhorns. And Lincoln Riley has been in five of these. Four of them at the, at the Cotton Bowl as the head coach. Lincoln Riley, obviously the offensive coordinator before that. But Steve Sarkeesian, it's not like he hadn't been in, in big games before, right? He's the head coach at USC's, Alabama, and the Platte. But it's his first time at OU Texas to go along with the first time for Casey Thompson being the starting quarterback at Texas. So that may be a dynamic to watch there as we move forward. Here's the, uh, the head coach on his quarterback. I think it speaks volumes to his just kind of own personality. You know, he, he chose to go where he thought was best for him. And I think a lot of times recruiting, there's a lot of narratives that come in with, with ties to universities for whatever reason and different things. But ultimately, you know, young men need to choose what's best for them. They're the ones that got to get up at 5 a.m. in the morning and, and work out and run and practice and, and do all the things. So they, they, you know, he chose to come to the University of Texas. He wanted to be a Longhorn through the adversity, through being the backup, through not being named the starter, through per, that perseverance. I think he was able to get through that because this was his choice to, to want to come here. I think that's a really interesting breakdown and, and probably the right breakdown for Steve Sarkeesian talking about Casey Thompson and his decision not only not to just go to Oklahoma, but, but I mean, to go to Texas, that's a different deal. Well, and OU recruited Cam Rising, who then committed to Texas, and OU came calling, and he's, he stuck with the Longhorns, even though they, the yep. Longhorns were going to sign Cam Rising. He's believed in himself this entire time. He didn't transfer when Ellinger was a quarterback, didn't transfer when he didn't get the starting job. He's believed in himself. 
and here he is starting OU Texas. For good reason. I mean, these are the number one and number two quarterbacks, at least numbers-wise, in the Big 12 as far as throwing touchdown passes. Spencer Rattler's been on the field a little bit more, but you see what Casey Thompson's done in, in really three and a half games as the starting quarterback there. Nine touchdowns, 707 yards. He's run for three other touchdowns, so he's played very well, and he's going to be a problem for Oklahoma. And Lincoln Riley certainly knows about Casey Thompson, his family, the history, and, and what he's up against today. You know, listen, it's our rivals, um, so, you know, you never wish too much good upon them, uh, but it, it's, it, it has been fun for me to see Casey do well. Uh, it really has. I mean, it's no surprise. I think he, you know, made the most of his opportunity last year in the bowl game, played very well, and obviously, um, you know, here from, I think, game three on uh, for them has, has, has played at a high level, done some really good things, moving around, throwing the ball well like he does. And uh, so it's, you know, I, I don't wish him success on Saturday. Obviously, we're going to get out there and compete against each other. But I, I do, I am happy for him. I'm glad that he's having success, and I'm, I'm not surprised. Head coach at Oklahoma there, Lincoln Riley. Uh, let's get down to the nitty-gritty because you can talk quarterbacks all you want in this football game. But... I think the storyline for me, if OU is going to win, it's going to be the difference in B. John Robinson, who might be the best player in college football, running the football and being a dominant runner. How, how's OU going to stop him? The difference in the running games in this, in this football game, I think that decides who wins it. Yeah, I mean, Oklahoma hasn't given up a 100-yard rusher but just one time over the past 18 games. They've been really good at limiting the team's number one tailbacks. This guy's unbelievable, top 20 player in the country. He wanted to go to OU. That's what all the recruiting experts say. OU recruited Seth McGowan instead. That's turning out to be a huge mistake in yeah. recruiting because B. John Robinson's the best in the country. He can catch the ball a little bit too, Brian. He's electric in the open field. I think B. John Robinson has the edge in this matchup because Kennedy Brooks, let's face it, OU thinks Eric Gray's better. Eric Gray's been starting, getting more of the, more of the uh, possessions, more of the touches. He didn't last week though. Kennedy Brooks was running back number one for Oklahoma. And so I absolutely for B. John Robinson, maybe the best running back in, in college football. I think certainly the best running back, maybe the best player in college football a, a week ago. 35 carries, 216 yards, a couple of touchdowns and a win against TCU. Texas has all kinds of weapons. You mentioned this right before the show we were talking. Uh, this is the first time in a long time and you look at Texas and you go, man, I got some scary dudes. And it's not just B. John Robinson. Xavier Worthy is uh, an electric kid, a freshman out of Fresno, California. You just watch that. Go, not only can he catch it and run, you got to tackle him and get him to the ground, and he's a problem. Yeah, I mean, for years we would go to the Cotton Bowl and be like, where is the skill talent on Texas's offense? It's basically Sam Ellinger running the veer with yeah, their only yeah, offense yeah. for years. And this kid, wanted, this kid was recruited by Alabama. Sarkeesian was the offensive coordinator in Alabama. He wanted this guy, and he can pick whoever he wants at receiver when he's recruiting for Alabama. Yeah. That tells you the type of talent he is. He was number eight wide receiver in the country. He's a game break breaker. He had just one catch for seven yards against TCU. If you throw that out, he's averaging 22 yards per catch. That's like James Washington good yards per catch. James Washington led the country in yards per catch. He's not alone either. They, they got another guy, Jordan Whittington, who's a sophomore out of Quero, Texas. Oh, by the way, shout out. Quero Gobbler, which is uh, an outstanding mascot there <laughs> in, in Quero, Texas. But Jordan Whittington, you talk about a difficult catch master. He is certainly one of those, and he's another guy that, I mean, you got to get him on the ground. He's a game breaker, and he's somebody that, especially with a Sooners defensive backfield that's banged up. I mean, these are two guys that you're going to have to figure out a way. It's not just B. John Robinson, Casey Thompson, a couple of wide receivers that are tough. Look at him just dragging defensive backs. Yep. You know, OU has not tackled well this year, and this guy is tough to tackle. He's made plays in this game before in his career. He doesn't get the ball a ton. But when he gets it, just look at him. He's, he's going to score. He, he, he's a baller. He makes plays. And he's a big physical receiver that OU really has to wrap up. How much of a problem is it that the, the OU secondary, I mean, th they have had some issues. They've had some injuries. I am concerned a little bit about how they're going to shake because it's not only the B. John Robinson problem. It's a couple of wide receivers. We didn't even mention Joshua Moore. It's not just B. John Robinson. I, Texas, for the first time in a long time, they do have – serious weapons offensively and some weaponry that they, they just haven't had over the last couple of years. So that's going to be something to watch. We'll be talking about that throughout the duration of the show. Stay with us here on the Oklahoma Ford Game Day, counting down to the 117th edition of the OU Texas rivalry. We will talk about that Sooners defense and how they're going to try to slow down Texas 
Oh, baby. <laughs> I know it's a couple of weeks old, but get out of here. 45 minutes and counting. It doesn't get old. Now, for OU Texas, we'll also have Brandon Whedon coming up talking about quarterbacks. Stay with us. Oklahoma for Game B. Welcome back to the Oklahoma Ford Game Day. Carson Cunningham, Brian Keating, counting you down to the 117th edition of the OU Texas rivalry. We're talking a lot about the offense. Let's get a little bit of the, the OU defense, and I'll ask you this question. Um, so much was made of the OU defense coming into the season. Boy, this, this is why they're going to be different this year, right? Have they lived up to that? They have not, and a big part of that is they've just given up long, sustained drives. Yeah. I mean, OU only had three possessions in the first half against Kansas State. They have not been good on third down and fourth down getting off the field, getting the ball back to their offense. Because we thought, Brian, they looked a lot different this year coming in. They looked way more like an Alabama, a Georgia up front. The, the, the results haven't been there. I don't think Grinch has really dialed up enough pressure on third down. You know what has lived up to the hype? We'll call this today Movement That Inspires, brought to you by Kia. Roll it. He'll step up in the pocket, rolling right, lobs down, field, intercepted! la presión, se escapa a la derecha, se cuadra, dispara, balón flotado, Evic interceptado, interceptado a una mano, baja el balón, qué intercepción. That is just so great. Movement that inspires brought to you by Kia. It's DJ Graham, the call, which both of them are just excellent from the Sooner Sports Radio in English and in Spanish. Toby Rowland in English, Enrique Vasquez in Spanish. Spencer Rattler says, yep, <laughs> DJ Graham, wow. That's great in any language. And there was criticism. He didn't bat it down. Look, the ball's too high. There's a Nebraska player just behind him who's wide open. If he happens to tip that ball up in the air, Nebraska could have scored. It's one of the best interceptions you will ever see. Look, I know it's a couple of weeks ago, and they've played football games since then. But if you, you give me the movement that inspires that uh, oh, yeah. we, we, we bring to you from the fine folks at Kia, um, I'm, I'm willing to see this, you know, 20, 30 more times. DJ Graham from Kia, movement that inspires. It's part of a, a larger story as far as Oklahoma goes, forcing turnovers. And Alex Grinch came to OU, and the big reason the OU defense was going to be better is because 
they were going to get after people and force turnover. So you look at the numbers, and um, OU, as good as just about anybody in the country, and the number one in the Big 12. Yeah, you're right. When Alex Grinch arrived, that was a hallmark of his best defenses, was they forced turnovers. And the big reason they're finally doing that is they have one of the best pass rushes in the entire league, in the entire conference and the entire country with the Nick Benito. So they, they were not getting any pressure up front when Alex Grinch arrived. They have revamped that defensive line, and here are the results. Texas is pretty good, too. Eight turnovers is um, really it's, good. It, it's good. So I, these two teams, I think that's something to watch as we talk about so much offense throughout the next of the show and quarterbacks and all those things. Stay with us on the Oklahoma Ford game day. So much left to get to as we count you down to OU Texas from the Cotton Bowl. Oh, I love it. Corn dogs and Sooner fans, <laughs> smell the funnel cake. fans. You can smell it from here in Oklahoma City. Under 40 minutes to go on the Oklahoma Ford game day. Can you drown out there, fans? Can you be that much louder? Can you believe more than they do? Can you have more horns up than they do down? Yes, you can. And remember, appreciate them putting the horns down. You know why? It's a compliment to us. It means they hate us more than they love themselves. Sorry for them. Who I mean, them. come on, the number one Go Texas there. fan in America, Matthew McConaughey with a message for Longhorns fans. He's ready to go. Does that mean the... All right, want to welcome in special guest Brandon Whedon. That needs no introduction, of course. Big 12 champion, NFL quarterback for the, uh, let's see, Cleveland Browns, Dallas Cowboys, Houston Texans, Tennessee Titans. Yeah. Get them all right? You got them all right. <laughs> <There you> go. <laughs> um, I, we thought you'd be perfect to come in here and talk about quarterbacks. Um, and so I want to ask you about Spencer Rattler. And year two, what have you seen in his development? Because 
you know, preseason Heisman Trophy, all these kinds of things. What have you seen in year two as he's trying to fight through some of these things and get back on track? I've seen some good and I've seen some bad. Yeah. I mean, just to be to be frank, you know, I think there's so much expectation coming into the year. You know, you got all this, you got potential first round draft sure. pick, first overall pick maybe. So there's so much expectation. So it's going to be hard to live up to that. So, you know, you take, you take that and you throw it to the wayside. But you look at the tape, and I've watched quite a bit of it. It's, it's just he's, he doesn't look like he is real comfortable back there. Now, that could be offensive line sure. play. Uh, that could be just defenses kind of keeping everything in front and kind of the scheme they're playing on defense. But it just looks like everything he wants to do is kind of off schedule. You know, there's no um, in rhythm throws. It's all kind of improvised, get outside the pocket, and everything kind of turns into a scramble drill. Yeah. So I think that's that's a long winded way of saying I just don't think he's very comfortable right now in what he's doing. He's not playing with a ton of confidence. Um, arm talent. Some one of the best I've seen. I mean, the guy can flat out spin it. Um, so, you know, it's going to be it's going to be big for him this weekend to kind of get back on track, get some completions early, get some of that confidence going and they got to get the run game going. That'll help him as well. But uh, there's been some good and then there's there's been some stuff he obviously needs to clean up. You know, one of the things on the broadcast on Saturday, um, Brock Heward, who I think does a great job calling and he called the, uh, the OU Kansas State game. He said one of the things that he likes when Spencer Rattler's on the move, getting outside the pocket what, as a quarterback, why does that make him specifically more comfortable. I think again he has that arm talent, but I think it just it gets him away from the rush. You know, for me, when he's in the pocket, he doesn't throw a ton of balls on rhythm, so he likes to get up out of the pocket or go out of the back of the pocket, and that's where a lot of his big chunk yardage throws are. Right. And you know, I think it's good and bad. I think one, it's good because he's comfortable doing it, but it also cuts the field in half. And so I think sometimes that can be tough on some quarterbacks, not necessarily him, but he's done a really good job of, of using that to get his big plays. And so um, you know, they like to do a lot of bootlegs with him, get him out on the perimeter. But I was just talking to a guy earlier. If I'm rushing Spencer Rattler, if I'm a defensive end, I'm not running by him. I'm going to stay at his level. I'm going to keep him even with, with him, whether that's 8, 9, 10 yards, wherever that number is. And then I'm going to push the pocket. If I'm going to blitz him, I'm not going to blitz him off the perimeter. I'm going to keep him in the pocket and force him to beat me from the pocket. Because uh, you can tell he wants to get out there. I mean, he wants to get out and maybe take off and get a few yards and uh, show off that arm. But he... Uh, and his receivers are kind of on the same page. So, you know, that, I think he's at his best outside the pocket. And if I'm Texas, I'm going to try to find a way to keep him <laughs> in the pocket. Um, obviously, so much was made over the last couple of weeks about the booing and the, and the calling for the backup quarterback. And, and he got to play on the road last week. He's going to get booed there no matter what. You know, c coming back here, you ever been booed? Did you get oh, booed? absolutely. <laughs> yeah, in Cleveland for sure. <laughs> what, what, how do you fight through that? Because you were a pro when, when, you got, when that happened. He's a 19, 20-year-old kid. How do you fight through that and just stay positive and, and, and think about football? It's tough. I mean, he's human. I sure. Mean, you know, yeah. he, he hears it. <laughs> uh, his teammates hear it. Caleb Williams hears it. Sure. So it's, it's not an ideal situation. I don't like it. I don't like that they did it, especially at home. Um, you know, I, there's, they're just not in sync offensively. I mean, I think that goes from Lincoln Riley all the way down the offensive line to some of the things we're doing in the run game. And obviously that all kind of reflects Spencer Rattler's play, and, and he can make it better. But the booing, it, it doesn't do any good. I can promise <laughs> you that. You know, I mean, just for your psyche, he's a confident kid. Sure. You can tell the way he handles the media and, and the stuff he says. But to me, it's just a lose-lose situation. If it's me and I'm in that student section or if I'm in that section, I'm giving them the, the, the quiet down because I just don't think, it, uh, I don't think it benefits anybody. And, uh, you know, hopefully – Hopefully, uh, there's been enough talk about it that it doesn't happen again. Uh, sure, sure. I, I, I look for OU Texas half. It's going to be Texas half. Right. But surely they're not going to be booing, and, and, and they're going to be scoring some points. Um, I, I want to ask you about his connection with um, Marvin Mims. Coming into the year, you know, ESPN had Marvin Mims, the eighth-ranked best player in college football. And to this point in the season, he has, what, uh, 14 catches, no touchdowns. He had nine touchdowns in 11 games. You know, you obviously had a, a tremendous connection with Justin Blackman. How does that work itself out? Because these two guys, they're just not finding the right rhythm together. Yeah, it's, it's challenging because everybody's asking that question to both of those guys, and they're trying to make it work. You know, so, you know, Marvin Mims is a deep threat. They want to yeah. get the ball to him down the field. Well, the style of defense that all the, the OU's had to play these first few weeks, they're keeping those guys in front. It's a lot of split safety, a lot of drop eight. So they're not really letting guys get by you. So, you know, I, I think there's, there's ways you can get him involved. Um, he's a 
electric got the ball in his hands, get it to him in space, you know, whether it's tunnel screens or bubbles or whatever it may be. And then those chunks will eventually come. Um, he's saying all the right things. I read some quotes today. He's, he's saying all the right things. Yeah. I know he's got to be frustrated because he's a big play guy. And I'm sure Spencer's frustrated because I know not that black men would come to me every game, but, <laughs> if I wasn't, but if I wasn't getting him the ball early, he's like, hey, man, just throw it up. I'll make a play. And so there's some of that probably going sure. on. Um, but, you know, the worst thing you can do as a quarterback is force, force your hand. You know, there, if it's there, you got to hit him. You know, a lot of ball left. And there's a lot yeah, of ball. Oh, there's yeah, no reason oh, yeah, to press oh, yeah. the panic button yet because uh, I think he is a special talent, and they're going to need him. I mean, he's, he's going to be a big play threat for them as the year goes Running on. Running game is going to help that, that offense too. No, no question about that, right? I think they need to be a run-first football team. You've got a good quarterback that's got arm talent, but they need to run the football. And I think that'll take a little bit of that pressure off that offensive line. There's been a lot made of you know, them kind of struggling, them kind of getting in sync. Um, yeah, great running back core. You've know, you got a nice little one-two punch there. If you can involve Spencer in the run game, I think that's where you've got to kind of, kind of make your money. And then eventually those guys come up, Marvin Mims over the top, and sure. that's, that's what you uh, – that's what you're hoping for. All right, hang in there with us. We'll get back to you in just a second. I want to talk Texas, and there's usually we don't care about that the quarterback at Texas, but this is this is different because he's just from from down the street. So Brandon Whedon, we'll see you in just a little bit. You know, one of the things is we bring in Carson Cunningham back in here um, that, that he brought up running game, and that's going to help Spencer Rattler, the OU offense, the offensive line. The teams that have outrushed the other have won this football game. And in Lincoln Riley's tenure, it's been Oklahoma. Yeah, and really since 1999, the team that has rushed for more yards has won 20 of the past 22 OU Texas games. That tells you how important it is. OU has only given up one 100-yard rusher in 18 games in Texas. Arkansas ran absolutely through yep. Texas. Yep. So that's, that's a big factor here for Oklahoma. they got to get the running game going. All right, um, uh, who's a guy... You know, if you're sitting here thinking, we're not talking about enough probably that could really make an impact in this game. And it, for me, I, I sit there and I go, um, it's Jeremiah Hall. And it, at OU, it just seems to be that fullback tight end spot. It's just a guy that Bob Stoops always used to say, a football player, you know, Trey Miller. His favorite player on the team. Favorite player on the team. And, and for me, um, it's Jeremiah Hall. And so today, experience amazing. It's Jeremiah Hall, and and the things and the ways that they get this guy involved. I mean, that when they run that play, it's wide open 99.9% .9 of the time. Yeah, and the fullback H-back has been a very important part of Lincoln Riley's offense since its inception. I mean, you go back to Dimitri Flowers, who caught double-digit touchdowns. He caught 13 touchdowns as a fullback. Jeremiah Hall has, has been more effective than Austin Stogner in this offense. He has 10 career receiving touchdowns. That's a lot for a wide receiver in their career. Right, so, right. And when the chips are down, Brian, you're right, near the goal line, Lincoln always finds a way to dial something up for Dimitri Flowers, Jeremiah Hall, the list goes on and on, and he did that against Kansas State. He had two touchdowns a week ago against Kansas State. He's a big part of this offense when they can get him involved. And if, if, if the big plays aren't there, it just seems like Jeremiah Hall is a guy, Toby Rowland calls him the bullfrog, but he's um, he just seems to make a play for OU when they need it. Uh, stay with us on the Oklahoma Ford game day. Counting you down to OU Texas at the Cotton Bowl. We're getting close. 26 minutes and counting. Keep it here.
we have to be the most physical team on the field. It's big. Man, this boy's going to go home and play for us. Jamel Fleming has taken it to the house. Do your job. It's enough. I promise you. Talk about a tightrope job on the sideline. Unbelievable. Rocky Calvin. Six touchdown for Griffin. I can't believe it, Carson. The Superman play is 20 years old. Unbelievable. The most iconic play for me in Sooner history, definitely in the Red River, Red River rivalry. And what's amazing about this play, Brian, these aren't just two random players. These are two of the best players to ever wear a Sooner yeah. uniform. My opinion, Roy Williams, the best player of the, of the Bob Stoops era. Teddy Lehman, the most decorated linebacker they've had in a long time. Buckus Award winner, Bed Narek. So not only is it an iconic play, it's made by two iconic players. Brent Musburger's call on this is just, I mean, you know, you can hear it Peak in your of sleep. his powers. Peak of his powers. And I, it is hard to believe that the Superman play turns 20. So they, this is cool. Um, Teddy Lehman and Roy Williams were on a podcast a couple of days ago and talking about reliving the 20 year anniversary of the Superman play. And you, you talk about those two guys. You know, they, it's just cemented in their brains. Oh. I mean, every, everything about that. They remember every little detail. It's the Sooner Sports Radio Network, their Sooner Legacy Series podcast. And I thought the audio was so good, I had to match it to video. And here they are breaking down the big play. You see me on the video. You see me come up, and then you see me back up. I was like, oh, here we go. I mean, <laughs> this is all or nothing. You know, for all the marbles, Mike told me not to jump, but I'm going for it because I know he's not going to hit me low, Brett Robin. I, I cleared, I cleared Brett Robin, and then all I know is I see I'm, I I grab him with uh, my left arm, and then I hit the ball out with my right. It flutters, goes into Teddy's hands. I'm trying to jump and block the pass because I know it's coming out. I know where he's throwing it, and I'm trying to get into that window. I, I kind of jump up in the air to try and bat the pass, and then uh, obviously it doesn't come out on time. So I kind of like do like a little double jump, and then the ball's like fluttering in the air and I just grabbed it before I even had time to think about it. I just grabbed it. Well, the next thing I hear is, my, I mean, I hit the ground and right when I hit the ground, all I hear is like a big explosion of just crowd noise. Then I look up and I see, I see the ball going into Teddy's hands and he scores and it was just, it was awesome. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> was. Awesome what? Roy Williams describing it. It was just Awesome, uh, which gets us to uh, another guy that's a pretty good football player at the University of Oklahoma. Our Ford, built Ford tough, defensive player to watch, linebacker Nick Benito. Yeah, he's the best player on the Sooner defense. He's going to be a first-round draft pick. He's the best in terms of the numbers and the metrics, the best pass rusher in college football in terms of efficiency. And they haven't used him a ton in pass rush situations, but he's made some big plays already this year. And he was only on the field for about 40% of the plays against Kansas State. He's their best player. Yeah. I would advise Alex Grinch to start subbing less and keeping Benito out there. Built Ford Tough, defensive player to watch for Oklahoma linebacker Nick Benito. Built Ford Tough, linebacker, or, uh, player to watch for the Texas Longhorns is Josh Thompson. Is a big play defensive back for Texas. Had a pick six. Yeah, there's a few playmakers that you notice on the defensive side for Texas, but this is one of them, the pick six against Texas Tech. And let's face it, Spencer Rattler hasn't thrown a ton of interceptions this year. But he's throwing it up for grabs. A lot of batted balls as, as receivers have had to play defense a lot of the times this year. This guy will make him pay if he throws it up for grabs. Josh Thompson, built for tough. Defensive player to watch for the Texas Longhorns. He's a good football player. That Longhorn defense isn't great. Giving up some points, but a playmaker right there, Josh Thompson. No question about that. Stay with us on the Oklahoma Ford game day. Can you down to the Red River Showdown. Stay with us on the Oklahoma Ford game day.
So let's go back to the high school video. This is Casey Thompson, who is now the starting quarterback at Texas, just scoring some touchdowns for Southmore down the street. I mean, you know, you go, you go put up some numbers for the Sabercats, and then you commit to Texas, and now you're the starting quarterback playing against Oklahoma. Pretty cool. Yeah, it's an amazing story. I mean, the first Oklahoma kid to start for Texas in this rivalry in 117 years. I mean, that, <laughs> that says it all. And then yeah. you get to the fact of who his father is. Pretty crazy story. We'll get to the Charles Thompson stuff here in, in just a second. Um, when you watch him play, you know, what stands out to me is he, I mean, look, the, he's a great athlete. You can see that. You saw that when he was in high school. I think he's a much better passer than I remember him being in high school. He's been very poised. He's done a, a really good job of what Steve Sarkeesian and that offensive staff have asked him. Hadn't turned it over a bunch. Now, he will make a mistake here or there. And so I think if you're OU, try to put pressure on him, force him into some bad decisions. But he's held up very well for Texas as their starting quarterback over the last three games. What he's been able to do is sustain drives and end them with scores. I mean, 23 of his 29 drives as a starting quarterback have ended in scores. And you look at the opposite side, Spencer Rattler and them have been out of sync, out of rhythm. We heard Brandon Whedon talking about that earlier. They've not been able to convert on third down a lot. So he's been the more efficient quarterback to this point in the season. It's all going to change when half the stadium split <laughs> crimson, half the stadium sp split burnt orange. And he remembers, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm starting in the Cotton Bowl. He talked about that earlier in the week. You know, I never really grew up hating Texas. Um, you know, the horns down was something that just was, I think, like the low, the hand symbol. Um, and so I never really grew up like hating a team. Mm -hmm. uh, I've never been like that. And uh, even now that I'm at Texas, I don't, I wouldn't say that I hate OU. Um, I just try to focus on doing my job. And at the end of the day, I'm a competitor. I want to win and I also want to start. And so that's what mm -hmm. it comes down to. This, this rivalry is uh, it's very traditional. Um, it's been legendary. And I think that being able to go out there uh, on a field and uh, in a rivalry and get to play and compete against uh, a great team, uh, I think it just shows uh, a level of trust from my coaches, obviously. Um, but like I said, it's a dream come true for me to just to be a part, like you said, of that tradition of, of great quarterbacks that have been able to play and start in this game. Uh, there have been a lot of great players that um, you know, like I said, made their name in this game, and I'm looking to do the same this week. Let's go back in time a little bit. Oh, it's just a, a papa. Charles Thompson. He, Charles Thompson knows the horns down. Well, the is, horns down. This is so cool, and it's just, it is so unique that uh, Charles Thompson rumbling on in in the Cotton Bowl is going to be sitting there in the Longhorn sideline wearing burnt orange. It is, um, it's unique and cool, and I, you know he's just the proudest papa that he could possibly be. Well, he said him and Kendall, his other son, are going to be wearing neutral colors to the game. The, the <laughs> blood's thicker than water. He's going to be rooting for his son Casey. He's made that clear, but he's not going to be wearing orange, and that's, just, that's something he can't get past. He was the pride a lot and led him to a 44-9 win as the number one ranked team in the country. Oh, and by the way, he got drafted by the Cincinnati Reds. Pretty good athlete. Pretty good, athlete. Pretty good genes there for Casey Thompson. Pretty good genes in that family. Let's bring in Brandon Whedon one more time. All right, I want to welcome Brandon Whedon back into the Oklahoma Ford game day. And, and I got to ask you about the quarterback at Texas. And I said it earlier, normally we're not sitting here in Oklahoma City and we're, and, and we're worried about the stories of the quarterback from Texas. But Casey Thompson, kid from Southmore High School, it's a very unique situation. Dad played quarterback at Oklahoma. Um, he hadn't played in this rivalry game yet. What's it like for him? Because he's played football. But he never played in a football game quite like right. this in a rival. What's it like your first big rivalry game where the world is watching you? It's, it's honestly, it's worse throughout the week. And then once the game day comes, it's like, man, let's get, it's finally here. Let's go play. <laughs> you know, and, and as a player, you've probably, I mean, you played sports. I sure. Mean, once you get out there, I mean, you don't really hear the noise. You know, you don't hear all the things going on kind of in the stands. So I'm sure he had this one circled. I know it's the oh, yeah. biggest game of the year for him. But I bet he's had this one circle for a while. So, uh, you know, I, I, he's played some pretty good football. I mean, he, he really has. He's done some really good things. I think they're a better football team with him back there, you know, kind of calling the shots. Um, Steve Sarkeesian has done a pretty good job of kind of getting him in a rhythm, doing things he likes. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, being an Oklahoma guy, going to Oklahoma, dad played at OU. Yeah. That thing was circled and highlighted, I can <laughs> promise you. He's, he's looking forward to this one. Certainly, quarterbacks get all the play. Um, but for Texas, it's, it starts with B. John Robinson, who – uh, running back for the Longhorns might be the best player in college football. Um, he is electric, and I think how's Oklahoma going to get off the field? They've had trouble on third and fourth down. That's why some of these teams have, have been able to stay on the field, fewer offensive possessions. What's OU going to do to try to slow down B. John Robinson? 
Man, they better be doing some tackling drills. <laughs> and, and, and not just tackling. I mean, you got to wrap this guy up. You can't just hit him. I mean, he'll bounce off of you. I watched some tape this morning. Hadn't seen a ton of him. I'd seen him live, but I hadn't got a chance to go back and really watch him and, and see why he's so successful. I mean, the guy's explosive. And he's, he's, he's built low to the ground. He runs a great pad level. And guys are j literally just bouncing off this guy. I mean, he is an absolute beast. And, uh, you know, if, you, if you're not very gap sound, you know, in your defensive front and your linebackers are not on the same page, I mean, he's a home run hitter, too. Yeah. So you got to wrap this guy up. The first guy's got to get there. He's got to wrap him up. And that second guy's got to come try to get the football because uh, I agree with you. If he's not the best back in the country, he's on the short list. And uh, he's, just, he's just been giving teams fit. So he's, he's a lot of fun to watch. And um, I was listening to a deal coming in. I, a lot of people are comparing him to Cedric Benson and guys like that, yeah. which that's a pretty good comparison. They kind of run similar. He is, uh, he's a load. And uh, so Oklahoma better – they better whatever drills they do during the week. They yeah. gotta they gotta get them dialed up. Um, coaching advantage here. Lincoln Riley played in this game a bunch of times. Four and one against Texas. Um, one of those was in the Big 12 championship game. So three and one at the Cotton Bowl. Steve Sarkeesian never coached in this rivalry, but I mean he's been around USC all kind of and coaching advantage at, at all in this. I mean I, I think Lincoln obviously knows more of what to, to expect. You know you got the stadium the way it is. Yeah. All the build up, the fair, you got all the distractions you got to worry about. Lincoln has a pretty good idea of how everything's going to go on Friday night and then leading up to game day. You know, Sark's played in a bunch of big ones, Alabama, LSU. So he's been in USC. big games before. Yeah, exactly. USC had some big ones. So, but I, in particular in this rivalry, I mean, you got to give maybe the upper hand as far as just preparation, knowing what to expect to Lincoln. Um, you know, and I think he'll have those guys ready. I think, you know, all the outside noise of the good, the bad, and the ugly. This one, this game's different. And this game's different for everybody. When you come to a rivalry game, you can throw the rest out, out the window. They're going to be ready to play this football game. Brandon, I appreciate you coming in. Good stuff. Brandon Whedon. Countdown to OU Texas. Less than 10 minutes to go. Who's going to win OU or Texas? We'll tell you next. Welcome back to the Oklahoma Ford Game Day. Brian Keating, Carson Cunningham. We've got OU Texas at the top of the hour. Let's get to the final thoughts and final kind of 
things as we as we get this ready to play this rivalry football game. Our lucky star stars to watch. As much as we've talked about the quarterbacks, I, I think this is where the game's going to be won and lost, and it's going to be a couple of running backs. Start with Kennedy Brooks for the University of Oklahoma. Yeah, the team that's won the rushing battles won 20 of the past 22 of these games. Make no mistake about it. And Kennedy Brooks is their best running back. I think they've been kind of holding him back since they only had two scholarship backs to start the year. He's their best running back between the tackles. If they want to throw it to Eric Gray in space, that's fine. But this guy averages six yards per carry this year, seven for his career. He's not flashy, Brian, but what he no. does, he gets an extra three or four yards seemingly every carry that, that doesn't exist. The, the space isn't there, but he finds it. Four touchdowns this season, and I think for the first time all year, a week ago against Kansas State, he was their feature back. I think that's the way it needs to stay. Kennedy Brooks, lucky star, star to watch. And for the Texas Longhorns, look, make no mistake, we can talk all we want about Casey Thompson, we can talk all we want about some of those wide receivers, and they're good and they're capable, but they ain't this dude. B. John Robinson is different, might be the best player in college football. He is electric, he is spectacular, and uh, he can get it. Dante Foreman won the Doak Walker a few years ago for Texas, and they haven't really had a stud running back since. They have one. This yeah. guy is the best running back in the country for me. And, and watch him come out of the backfield. Doesn't catch the ball a ton, but he's averaging 17 yards per catch. If, if Texas struggles to run the football, they're going to just flip it out to him wide and get him in space. Seven touchdowns this season. He's a heck of a security blanket for Casey Thompson. There's no doubt about it. You look at the numbers and how B. John Robinson stacks up with the rest of the country. He's number two in the country in rushing. And so I think that tells you all you need to know. And Texas played a, as good a schedule as any of those teams. So B. John Robinson certainly capable. Um, among the best players in college football. And when you talk to Lincoln Riley and Alex Grinch earlier in the week, they know who's, who they have to stop it as far as Texas goes. You know, you, you watch him play, and he just he does so many things well. Um, you know, catches the ball well for him. Um, he's got big play ability, but he's got um, really nice balance, acceleration, uh, good feel for the schemes that they're running. So, I mean, I think he's a he's a complete player. When you look at him, the the, the film speaks for itself. He jumps off the the, the tape. You know, you 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 kind of halfway uh, see from afar as you're you're going to prepare for your opponents each week and playing your games. And you hope when you turn on the video. You know, it's 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 going to be hype and and not real. But in this particular case, it 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 matches. You know, you're not always going to get him with the first guy. He's too elusive and strong. And so, uh, you know, I think the key is like any great back, man. You got to try to get them stopped before they get started. Uh, it doesn't take you uh, very many snaps, you know, to okay, this looks different. You know, so I, I think he, uh, if he's not the best one out there, he, he certainly is one of the best. I like how Alex Grinch said, uh, you turn on the tape and you hope it's hype. He said, no, nope, <laughs> it's not hype, it's, it's real. No, that's real. It, it's real. All right, let's go some quick hitters as we count down to OU Texas here. Um, so much talk about the quarterback. Spencer Rattler or Casey Thompson has the bigger impact today. I'm going Spencer Rattler. Look, he was clearly rattled, for lack of a better phrase, in the first half last year, but really settled in played outstanding down the stretch. He had a slow start this year, but Casey Thompson hasn't played a team of OU's caliber. No. He certainly hasn't played in an environment like this. I have to go with Rattler based on experience. Yeah, I'm with you. I, I think it's Spencer Rattler. He's been in this situation before. And for everything that, you know, you talk about the booing and the West Virginia and, and all that, you're right. The, the last drive against West Virginia, you had to get him down the field, go kick a field goal, win the game. Um, he was very efficient a week ago against Kansas State. They still got to find big plays. Still have to find big plays, but for my money, it's absolutely Spencer Rattler, a guy that's more prepared to be in this situation. Completed, completed 31 of his last 34 yeah, passes. That, that's pretty good. All right, let's go to the running back. Kennedy Brooks or Bijan Robinson? It's close, because I love Kennedy Brooks. I've loved him since he started playing at Oklahoma. It's back-to-back 1,000-yard seasons. He's, his average per carry is excellent, but Bijan Robinson is the best running back in the country. Alex Grinch saw it on tape. I've seen it on tape. He is a game breaker. He's the best running back we've seen in this series from Texas in quite some time. Bijan Robinson. I'm not gonna say Bijan Robinson. I think I think that's all you got to say. Um, Marvin Mims will catch a touchdown. Sorry, has been Oklahoma. fierce. And, has yeah. zero this season. He'll get one today. He only has 14 catches this year. I, based on those percentages, I got to say he's not going to score a touchdown. I'm with you. Um, I've seen no reason to think Marvin Mims is going to break out. He should. He had 10 a season ago. One of the better wide receivers in college football, but you want me to go out on a limb and say he's going to score, I'm going to go with no on that. Defense. 